Hello everyone. Back again with film recaps. In this video, I'm going to recap one of the thriller mystery films from 2023, titled Night of the Hunted. Before we get to the storyline, I'd like to wish everyone a happy and great day. Without further ado, let's get straight to the storyline. The film begins with a scene in a motel featuring Alice, a 30-year-old woman who gets a call from her husband, Eric, and rushes into the bathroom. It's 2 in the morning, Eric greets her warmly, and reminds her that they have an appointment with a fertility doctor that day. We learn that Alice works as a social media manager at a pharmaceutical company, and currently, she is on her way home after attending an important convention. But unbeknownst to Eric, his wife is cheating on him with her colleague and best friend, John. In the next scene, the two check out of the motel, and resume their journey once again. Along the way, it is revealed that Alice and Eric are having problems conceiving a child, but Eric seems to be very supportive and caring. But then, John notices that the fuel has almost run out, and this confuses him a bit as he clearly remembers filling the tank just yesterday. Nonetheless, he pulls over at a nearby gas station to solve the problem. While he gets busy with the refueling, Alice heads inside the store to grab a cup of coffee. At the same time, we see that the car is leaking gas, which explains why it ran out of gas so quickly. Nearby the station is a large billboard that reads God is nowhere. Inside the store, Alice heads to the counter to make the payment, but there seems to be no one around, so she leaves the money on the counter. Just then, she spots something horrific, blood splattered on the walls, and as soon as she reaches for the door to leave. An unknown person shoots her in the arm. Following that, a barrage of bullets is fired in her direction. Alice somehow manages to crawl to safety, but her pleas for help fall on deaf ears. It turns out John is listening to loud music inside his car, so he is completely oblivious to what's happening inside. After applying a tourniquet around her injured arm, Alice takes a small peek outside. All of a sudden, a bullet narrowly misses her, and this is when she realizes that the sniper is on the same billboard. Now, she is left in a very precarious position, she is cornered by an unknown assailant, and her only friend is outside, totally unaware. Alice then decides to reach for her phone, which is a few meters away. But just when she is about to grab it, the sniper destroys it with a single shot. With time running out, Alice decides to look for other means of survival. She gazes at the CCTV footage and discovers that there is an exit door. And then suddenly, she hears a voice coming from somewhere. On checking around, she notices a walkie-talkie on a nearby desk. Reaching there is still very dangerous as the desk is in the sniper's range, so Alice carefully devises a plan. She throws a few packets of chips in the air, and when the sniper shoots at them, she hurries to get the walkie-talkie. Alice tells the man to call the police, while the man on the other end inquires about his wife, Amelia. Meanwhile, John notices that the fuel is again running low, and then eventually finds out that his gas tank is leaking. Since Alice has not returned for a long while, he goes inside the store to check on her. Unfortunately, as soon as he spots her, he is shot in the neck. John falls to the floor and pleads with Alice for help, but the sniper shoots him once again, and finishes him off for good. After the horrifying incident, Alice tries to retrieve the walkie-talkie, which was thrown into the open area by using a mop stick. Alice then tells the man her name and the condition in the mini-market. When the man inquires about his wife Amelia again, Alice informs him that she sees no one else in the room. Hearing this, the man immediately calls the police for help. He then assures Alice that help will be arriving in 15 minutes. However, the next second, he lets out a maniacal laugh, and reveals that he was the one who blew John's head off. As if that wasn't enough, the man adds that if Alice doesn't want to talk to him, he will come down there. On observing the room, Alice notices some light switches, and thinks to herself that if the store gets dark, she will have a better chance of escaping. Alice grabs some objects, and starts hurling them towards the switchboard, but it doesn't work. At that point, she notices that the shelf behind which she is hiding his wheels. Alice slowly moves the shelf, and dodges the barrage of bullets fired at her. She successfully takes a leap, and turns off the lights inside the store. Moments later, 
Alice tries to contact another person on the radio, but the call keeps connecting to the sniper. The sniper says that no one else is there other than himself, Alice, and his wife, Amelia. Here Alice finally discovers that Amelia is dead, and the killer reveals that he killed his own wife because she was cheating on him. Upon learning this, Alice is even more scared, because she has also been cheating on her husband. She deduces that perhaps this is the reason why the sniper is after her. Or maybe, she was just caught in the wrong place at the wrong time. After a while, Alice sees a vehicle arrive at the gas station, and a guy named Doug steps out of the car. He goes inside the store looking for his girlfriend, Amelia. Seeing him, Alice quickly asks him to get down, claiming that there is a deadly sniper nearby. She deduces that he is the same guy Amelia had been having an affair with. Alice tells him to call the police, but unfortunately, Doug left his phone in his car. Alice explains that his girlfriend has already been killed by her husband, but a shocked Doug claims the killer is lying, Amelia was never married. When the man gets to the counter, it dawns on her that ever since Doug arrived inside the store, the sniper has been silent, he hasn't fired any shots either. This makes her suspicious that Doug is actually the killer, but the guy insists that it's really not him. Doug claims that he and Amelia both work graveyard shifts, and he came here just to see his girlfriend. As a result, Alice is confused and she doesn't know whom to believe. She is still skeptical about the whole situation, so Doug tells her to talk to the killer then. Since time is running out and the sniper has been silent, Alice requests that he go to his car and get his phone to prove that he's not the sniper. She will try to distract the sniper as best as she can. Doug is scared about the whole idea, as it appears to be too dangerous, but when Alice keeps on insisting, he reluctantly agrees. Unfortunately, as soon as he reaches his car, he thinks he could reach the phone on the phone holder, but he is shot and killed, while his phone is also destroyed. This means that he was saying the truth all along, the sniper was not him. Alice is left devastated as she sent poor Doug to his death, and not only that, her chances of escaping are also gone. The real sniper returns to talk on the radio and says that she is a murderer. She sent Doug on a suicide mission, when she knew that he wouldn't survive. The sniper then reveals that he wants to know the truth, and he knew Alice was at the convention. He is disgusted by how she makes drugs which affects the lives of so many people. Alice claims that her company manufactures medications and she is just a social media manager. But the sniper claims that it is even worse, she is the one who distributes the drugs by lying that they are good. Plus, the sniper also knows Alice's company name, and claims Alice was a selfish lady who had climbed the corporate ladder by betraying others, and she deserves to die. This seemingly disillusioned individual states that Alice falsely accused a guy of sexual assault in order to advance her career. And the accused man was fired, leaving him with no money to care for his sick daughter. As he continues ranting on the radio about someone who could be him, Alice notices a lot of umbrellas next to the counter, and decides to do something with them. Whether or not this man in the walkie-talkie was Amelia's husband is also debatable, considering that Doug explicitly stated that it was untrue. The sniper was possibly bluffing to get to Alice, and he shot Amelia simply because he needed Amelia dead to lie about being her husband, who looked for revenge for the cheating. It is unclear whether the attack on Alice was pre-planned, or just a random incident where Alice was just caught in the wrong place at the wrong time. As the sniper keeps on talking, Alice lines up some umbrellas, but as soon as he notices what she is doing, he fires multiple shots at the gas station. Luckily, Alice somehow reaches the exit door, but it appears to be locked right now. Alice then decides to look for items to break the padlock, and tries to break open it, but to no avail. Moments later, she sees a random guy arrive at the station to fill up some gas. However, when his credit card doesn't work, he soon departs. The sniper doesn't shoot at him, indicating that he only kills the people who find out about his plans. Meanwhile, Alice becomes emotional, and tries to convince the sniper to let her go. She mentions that she has not been able to conceive, and this has already put a lot of stress on her marriage. But to her surprise, the sniper already knows that she is cheating on her husband. He chastises her for being an irresponsible woman, and says that the world would be better off without her. At that moment, she spots a police car speeding toward the gas station, but sadly, it quickly drives by without stopping. Alice uses the diversion to leave the store and approach John's car quietly, while the sniper keeps asking where she is. 
however, when she tries to enter John's car. The sniper shoots at her, and this leaves Alice with no choice but to retreat back to the store again. In the process, she gets shot once again, this time in her thigh. Alice writhes in pain, and she is slowly losing her consciousness. But she later manages to apply first aid to her wound, which stops the bleeding temporarily, while the sniper continues to rant about humanity. Alice also notices a uniform of a certain Henry guy. He appears to have been fired a few weeks earlier, but his belongings are still here, including a picture of him along with his daughter. She then grabs a hacksaw, and tries to cut open the padlock. But in the process, she injures her own hand. Frustrated, she grabs the radio and says it's gonna take a lot more than killing her to solve his problems. She calls him by the name Henry, and sympathizes with his life. However, after a brief silence, the sniper only says, who's Henry? Moments later, another car pulls up at the station. An old man comes out to refuel his car, but he unfortunately sees Doug's corpse and freaks out. This alerts the sniper and he immediately shoots the man. To make matters worse, the man's wife also comes out, while Alice desperately tries to signal her to hide, but it's too late. The sniper shoots the old lady as well. In this way, an innocent couple is brutally murdered right in front of each other. The murderer then tells Alice that they share the evil gene, which she will pass on to her unborn child. Alice says they are nothing alike, and admits she chooses not to have children so they don't suffer from depression, and end up a coward, hiding in the dark, killing innocent people like the sniper. But right then, she notices a little girl named Cindy in the car. After witnessing her grandparents being brutally killed, she is too scared to run away. Alice immediately talks to the killer, and requests that he spare the child. But in response, he says that if he wanted to kill her, he would have already. He then asks Alice if she would give up her life for Cindy. Alice confidently says yes, and the sniper gives her two minutes to make the child go away. She tells the child to run to the road, but despite Alice's best efforts to persuade Cindy to leave, she is unsuccessful. The little girl instead runs inside the store, because she is too afraid to venture out in the dark. Now, with no options left, Alice blocks the door, and starts cutting through the exit gate's padlock. At the same time, the killer finally gets down from the billboard, and starts walking towards the store to finish the job. After a while, Alice manages to cut open the padlock, but she is devastated to learn that there is another shutter behind, which is locked. Now, she has no choice, but to face the monster herself. She quickly hides Cindy, grabs whatever weapon she can, and then braces herself for a fight. Soon, the sniper arrives at the store and is able to enter it, and he starts looking around. He asks Alice, was he sent here by her betrayed husband, is he a co-worker who got fired without due process so she could steal his job, or is he perhaps an anguished father, who's lost his daughter to complications after using the drugs from her company. As he reaches a corner, Alice suddenly jumps him from behind, and impales a rod in his back. But this is still not enough to bring the sniper down. He hits Alice, and the two begin to struggle when Alice tries to take off his mask. Meanwhile, as Cindy watches the fight unfold from a corner, a gunshot is heard, and Alice falls to the ground, seemingly dead. The killer now approaches the little girl's hideout, and finds her. He tries to remove his mask to disclose his face, but just then, Alice arrives out of nowhere. She uses the last of her strength to hit him with a fire extinguisher. The killer tries to get up but she lands another shot, rendering him immovable. She drags him to the hydraulic press and places him there, all the while trying to figure out who is behind the mask. But before she can see who he is, the machine gruesomely crushes his skull, finally bringing the whole drama to an end. The only problem is that Alice will never find out who the killer was. His motives are also not known, which is the biggest mystery in this movie. Alice eventually loses all of her energy, lies on the ground, and slowly breathes her last. A few seconds later, she passes away, with Cindy watching all of these terrible things occur. In the final scene, the little girl comes out of the store and starts walking down the road. The morning sun has arrived, and the little girl is lucky to be the only survivor of the brutal incident. Okay guys, that's all the recap of Night of the Hunted 2023. Thanks for watching. See you again in the next video.